Welcome back to another Filler Friday where I teach you how to play a game in 10 minutes or less. Or maybe more. But we'll see. Today, we're going in a bit of a different direction and I'm going to teach you how to play Catan Jr. We are big fans of Catan in this household and being able to play Catan Jr. with our kids has been a blast. So, I thought I would give it a how to play for anyone wanting to play games with their kids or anyone else for that matter. Let's put 10 minutes on the clock and dive right into it. To set up, place the board in the center of the table based on the number of players as indicated by the number of turtle aisles in the upper right corner of the water. For three or four players, use this side. For this two player game, I'm going to be using this side. Separate the resources by type and place them in a pile next to the board. There are five types and those are cutlasses, goats, wood, gold, and molasses. Next you'll create the market by taking one of each resource type and placing one in each of the five booths of the marketplace here. Shuffle the cocoa tiles, my five year old's personal favorite thing about this game, and place them in a stack next to the board with the parrot side facing up. Place the ghost captain on Spooky Island, which can be found in the center of the board for a three or four player game, but is located here in a two player game. Place the die next to the board. Each player will then choose a color depicted on the board. In a two player game, that's red or blue. Then take the seven pirate layers and eight pirate ships in your chosen color. In a three player game, the white pieces aren't used so they can stay in the box. You'll notice that some circles on the board are colored. These are your starting layer sites for your chosen color. Go ahead and place one layer on each of these spaces. The sites for your starting ships are beside each of your starting layers and are marked with a dotted line matching your color. Place one ship on each of these locations. Then place your remaining five layers and six ships in front of you as your supply. Each of you then take the building cost tile that matches your color and lastly take one wood and one molasses from the stockpile beside the table and place everything in front of you next to your building cost tile. The goal of Catan Jr. is to be the first player to build all seven of your layers. In order to build layers and ships and buy cocoa tiles, you'll first need some resources. You'll get these naturally throughout the game, but you can also trade with the stockpile and marketplace, and if you're feeling up to it, you can even trade with an opponent. That is, if you yourself have anything of value to offer. The youngest player starts the game and takes the first turn. Each turn is broken down into four steps. First, you'll roll the die and gain resources. Then you'll build, buy, or trade. Aside from rolling the die, all other steps are optional and can be performed in any order. First, let's talk about step one, rolling the die. On your turn, the first thing you will do is roll the die. The result of your die roll applies not only to you, but all players. For each layer that a player has adjacent to an island depicting the number rolled, that player receives one resource tile matching the icon found on that island. That means that if you have multiple layers adjacent to that same island that was rolled, you would receive multiple resources. If we take a look here, let's say that a three was just rolled. The red player has two of their layers adjacent to this island with a three, so they would receive two wood. However, the blue player only has one layer, so unfortunately for them, they only get one molasses. If a player rolls a six, no one receives resources. Instead, you take and place the ghost captain onto any other island of your choice. Then you take two resources produced by that island from the stockpile and place them in your supply. As long as that ghost captain remains on that island, no one will receive resources when the island number is rolled. So if we go back to our previous example, if the ghost captain was on this island, the red player wouldn't have received anything. Continuing with your turn, you may now take the build, buy, or trade action if you choose, and you may do them in any order. Let's first talk about build. On your turn, you can use resources to build pirate lairs or ships. So long as you have the resources, you can continue to build either of those. A lair will cost you one cutlass, one molasses, one goat, and one wood. You may build a lair on an empty lair site, but only if one of your ships is next to it. A ship costs one goat and one wood and may be built on an empty ship site, but only if it's adjacent to one of your layers. 
If you have the resources for it, you may also pay to buy a cocoa tile. These tiles cost one cutlass, one molasses, and one gold. When you purchase a cocoa tile, take one from the stockpile and flip it over to gain the reward on the other side. Rewards you'll see are as follows. Immediately move the ghost captain to a new island as if you just rolled a six. That means that you gain the two resources produced by the island and you block that island from producing resources for anyone adjacent to it. Immediately build a lair or ship for free following all placement rules. And lastly, immediately receive the four resources shown from the stockpile. If you ever have the most cocoa tiles, place one of your layers on the spooky island as if it had been built for free. If there is ever a tie for the most cocoa tiles, remove the layer that's currently on the spooky island and return it to the player's supply. As soon as the tie is broken, the player that broke that tie now has the most cocoa tiles and places their layer on spooky island. If you ever find that you have too many of one resource and not enough of another, you can trade. To trade, you have a few options. You can trade with the marketplace once per turn. When you do, take one of the tiles in your supply and swap it with one from the marketplace. Just a note, if there are ever five of the same resource in the marketplace, refresh it by taking one of each resource type and placing them in the booths, just like we did in the setup. In addition to trading with the marketplace, you may also trade with the stockpile as many times as you want. When you do, you must trade a matching pair of resources for a single resource of your choice from the stockpile. Lastly, and just so you're aware, this is an optional rule, you may trade with your opponents. Instead of trading with the marketplace, you can opt to trade with your opponents. In order to make a trade with your opponents, you need to declare what you would like to give up for the trade and what you would like to receive in return. For example, I'm willing to trade one gold in return for one goat. Trades made with other players must be a one for one trade, but can otherwise be taken as many times as you want. Once you cannot or do not want to build, buy, or trade, then you can pass and then the next player clockwise around the table starts their turn. Just a reminder, as soon as a player has built their seventh layer, the game immediately ends and that player wins. And there you have it. That was my how to play of Catan Jr. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified on any future videos. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Links for everything in the description below. But until next time, thanks for watching and happy gaming.